Volkswagen in partnership with the authorized seller CFAO and the Rwandan government marked history today, opening the first car assembly plant in Rwanda with a capacity to produce up to 5,000 cars. With a lower range model such as the Polo, approximated uh, to have a starting price of up to $23,000, the service expected from this investment extends to far more than car sales. Here's more. Having worked with emerging markets for a large part of my career, I can categorically say that Rwanda stands out as a country where it is about what can we do to make a project work rather than listing all the obstacles as to why something would not work. Under Volkswagen's Transform 2025 Plus strategy, we are strengthening our regions and focusing on new and up-and-coming markets. Alongside North and South America, as well as China, the Sub-Sahara region plays an increasingly important role. The investment announcement of Volkswagen in Rwanda was announced about 18 months ago. Since then, we saw a particular company, Osamiti, apply for a tender, compete with international companies, and win to provide mobility solutions or platform for the same for the company. Here's Mikaela Ruguizangoga explaining what exactly this will entail and what the future of it is in the country. The first service to be offered is a corporate car sharing, a service dedicated to institutions, corporates, and NGOs. We will start with 40 vehicles, and look to ramp up to 140 vehicles. This will be followed by ride hailing and uh, an initial fleet of 150 vehicles. And then in 2019, we'll have public car sharing with vehicle available in station, which can be self-driven. This will be followed by a shuttle service and lastly, lastly by a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing service. You might ask, why corporate car sharing? What are the adv advantages? You have a smart IT solution to manage your vehicle fleet and optimize your employee mobility. It reduces the administrative backlog. It produces accurate tracking and optimization of your costs. And it's quality, it's convenient, and it's efficient all at once for, for this product. We've heard about public ride sharing and corporate sharing as well. Let's get to what it entails when you're trying to buy a car. Now, I'm an SUV person myself, a sports utility vehicle, so ordinarily or naturally, I saw the Tirano first, and we got to sample it inside and get to understand what exactly buyers look for first when buying a vehicle. First of all, we will uh, engage you to know what kind of car you want to buy, what is the usage of the car, and uh, which car you are currently driving so that we are able to know what solution we are going to provide you. Right. Uh, after that, then uh, we'll take you through our model ranges and the pricing. Depending on uh, how you want to purchase the vehicle, we will either make arrangements with the banks who can offer finance solutions uh -huh. so that you are able to agree with them and uh, come up with a finance package for right. you. Once we develop that, then we go to the next process of ordering the vehicle for you. Right. Uh, once we order the vehicle, it comes here, we assemble it. How and then uh, It depends on the various uh, models, like the uh, Amarok will take around uh, four months to get here. Right. The Polo, we have stock from next month, we'll start assembly. Right. The, Terramont will be available from around August, right. so we can deliver these cars. Nowadays, technology in terms of automobile engineering has, uh, a, has been improved. You have smaller engines with uh, large torques right. and uh, quite quite uh, high power. Right. So like this model, this is a two liter, mm -hmm. Terramont, and uh, it has around 220 horsepower. Right. So a while back, you could only get probably around 150 or 60 right. horsepower right. from a two-liter right. engine. Right. But with technology and uh, yeah, advancement in the automobile in industry, we are able to get uh, small engines with, uh, with high, high, high torque and right. high power. Our idea is to come into the market and be competitive. So our pricing will be competitive. We're not going to be the cheapest, guaranteed, because it's, this is a, a fantastic product. Um, it's a number one bestseller in the world. Um, and I think pricing, if you want the cheapest car, then it's not this car's. But 
Value for money, excellent. One of the biggest challenges is use the used car market. Uh, if, if you reduce the number of uh, vehicles coming in uh, on the used car market, then it will automatically grow the, the new car market. Obviously, uh, pricing becomes the issue there. Um, but with the production plant we've got here, and the president has uh, agreed that we, the project is duty free, uh, and so it, it's, it makes the cars more affordable. Then you've got the motorability uh, program, where self-drive program, plus the the Uber-style um, program along with it. So we feel it's going to be very successful here. Uh, going back with Kenya, uh, the Kenya plant is a very diverse plant. So we, we build everything from the Polo, which you, not this particular one, the previous model, um, right up to um, hopefully this year, uh, 28 ton truck. So we built everything and we do a lot of complete uh, production there as opposed to SKD, which is what this is. So we've got many levels of production in, in Kenya, which is a different market. The, the problem with, the, with all these sort of projects is, is getting somebody to see the end. The end game is, is, is what's the most difficult part because they don't see this has got to be done, this has got to be done, that's got to be done. They see, they see what they have to do. So once you get the vision of everybody understanding what needs to be achieved and by when, then everything starts to come together. Some of us might know the history of the Volkswagen, but how about we hear it with some light touch and some bit of humor from uh, President Paul Kagame, his first experience with the Volkswagen back in the day. I remember so when I was a kid, before uh, my family and many other people's families were thrown out of this country, uh, I think it was at the age of four or something like that. I used to see a Volkswagen called uh, the Beetle, which used to have an engine uh, where we are not used to have it, where the boot is supposed to be. <laughs> Some might have found it hard to believe that German cars, uh, as we are used to call them, could really be built in Rwanda. Yet today, the first vehicles are rolling off the assembly line. So it's a, a good story. Africa does not need to be a dumping ground for second-hand cars or second-hand anything. <laughs> you know what has been going around also uh, about second-hand. Uh, in the long run, you end up paying a higher price anyway. So if you can high, pay a high price for second hand, why not, why not pay a high price for something new? It's a, it's a simple choice. I think we Africans, uh, Rwandans, we deserve better, and uh, I think this is one way of showing how we can afford it. In the medium term, the only way for us in East Africa uh, to move up the industrial value chain uh, from assembly to manufacturing is to build an integrated regional manufacturing base. When we shift from uh, uh, a logic of, uh, of competition to one of cooperation, but I think better still, the best way to put it is um, to fuse, the, bring together the two, competition and cooperation. Uh, when they are brought together, everyone gains.